Welcome to Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Six by six, the progressive power trio comprising of Ian Crichton, Nigel Glockler, and Robert Berry recently announced the release of their sophomore album, Beyond Shadowland, on Inside Out Music. April 26, 2024 is the release date. The band reconvened in Barry's own Sound Tech Studios in the San Francisco Bay Area in 2023 to bend, shape, hammer, and caress their diverse musical talents into 11 impressive new tracks. This album, they continued to find and build upon their unique melodic space, wielding guitar-driven rock metal and prog into a unique and powerful sonic setting. The band's self-titled debut release in 2022, which I love, especially uh, established the trio as a power chord-driven celebration of artistry, passion, and persistence. Prog Magazine said that the record was exciting, often potent, and demands repeated listens, while Classic Rock Magazine called it an inspired opening salvo that bubbles with chemistry. Six by Six is Ian Crichton, best known as one of the founding members of Saga. Alongside his brother Jim, Saga went on to sell roughly 10 million albums worldwide and continues to perform around the world. Nigel Glockler, best known as the drummer for British metal band Saxon. His powerhouse drumming is the engine that drives Six by Six's songs forwards relentlessly. And of course, Mr. Robert Berry. Moved to the UK to work with guitarist Steve Howe of Yes Fame, along with drummer Nigel Glockler, to revital revitalize the GTR brand. When GTR stalled, Robert partnered with British rock legends Keith Emerson and Carl Palmer to form three. With Emerson and Palmer, uh, Robert achieved a top 10 charting single and toured the USA. Robert's melodic sensibilities complement Ian's extraordinary guitar and Nigel's signature drumming perfectly. Love this band. Please welcome musicians, singers, songwriter, producer, engineer, Robert Berry to Interviewing the Legends. Hello again, Robert. Raymond, I'm sorry. This I'm not that Robert Berry. You've got the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> nice introduction, but you know it's not. <laughs> oh, you're that other guy. That's right. You're right. Yeah, about I'm that. a comedian. Yeah. You're the comedian. I had, guy, <laughs> I had a comedian get a hold of me. Said, "Hey, I want to cross pollinate our promotion and stuff." His name's Robert Berry. He said, hey, "It doesn't work for me." <laughs> That's funny. Good First to see all, you. Did Did somebody win a lot of money at the casino when you named this band? Because um, if two sixes are or a twelve are rolled in craps, you win and are paid thirty to one. I mean, did you get did you get the name from craps or is that you, you know no um, no? I, I'll tell you how, but it's interesting because most people say you know you have the band three, so you're you're working in threes here, right? True. And funny for me that three has always been kind of a lucky number, although I'm on my only wife. I call her my only wife, so don't don't get me wrong. Um, we were looking for a name. We have like a hundred names on a sheet and I, I won't say some of the most disgusting names that we came up with, but everyone you look up was taken, you know, shithead dead, 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 taken. Right. It just, so I, I thought, wow, human, I wonder what the length of human DNA is, you know, you see, and it wound up being six foot six. Oh, wow. Great. And looked it up. Someone had it. That's interesting. Awesome. Huh. I like um, the reason I, I thought about that because I like the way the S and an X looks in a band. Saga has an S, right? Saxon has an S and an X. They just look good to me. So I was mm -hmm. trying to find something with those puddle pieces. Um, 
I tried six by six. Nobody had that. I said, well, you know, we just like the way it looks and it fits us. And Ian likes to say we all have six, you know, we have two arms, two legs together, six of this, six of that, and other things. So uh, we sided on it. And once it came out, uh, a little folk trio that nobody or duo we never ever heard of said, oh, we we use that name. But we never, we looked it up everywhere, you know. Yeah. It happens a lot, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, and so, some people that's don't helpful. care. You know, they say, oh, so what? They got the name, too. We don't care. You know? Yeah. I think we would have had trouble if we would have called the band Saxon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it, that's how it came about. And immediately, we all loved it. Our graphics guy, he he made, writes press releases. He does all the CD covers and the website, everything. Rob Fowler came up with that logo. And again, immediately we loved it. And not only that, he came up with the name Beyond Shadowland because in, mm -hmm. in his thinking, nobody knew anything about us till the first album came out. Boom, we came on the scene. That was my big idea. And it actually turned out to be not such a good idea because when it got launched, nobody knew who, who are these guys, never heard of anything about them, right? So it worked, luckily. On the second one, he says, you guys, Came out of the shadows. Now you have to mm -hmm. go beyond the shadows. Right. And he got this great cover. And again, it just was magical. We loved it. And the record company loved it. Management we said, great. You know, let's do it. Let's use it. it it's a great album. And, and I love the first album as well. I first heard the first album and some of the tracks on moral.com because I listen to that station a lot. You know, they, okay. they play a lot of new stuff, which I like. Yeah. But, um, What's interesting is this album has um, every track has got a kind of a different twist to it, you know what I noticed. And and the openings, the intros are very interesting. It, they're all different, you know. That was the plan. You know, uh, we couldn't be happier with the way the first album was mm -hmm. received, and the way at that point mostly Ian and I were writing together. It just it poured out of us. It fit like puzzle pieces. Nigel has some songs on this next one that he wrote with us. Um, we didn't want to make the same album twice in a row. Mm -hmm. And they, a lot of bands do that. You know, I mentioned like Journey. You know, if you heard a first Journey album, second one, White Snake, yeah. you hear that? They're, it's the same sound, same style. Right. They're great, but it's just a different song with the same pieces to it. And that was a, the only plan, make it heavier, not do the second album the same as the first. And I think, like you said, we kind of went, we didn't not only didn't make it the same, but we got different corners of the, mm -hmm. the universe, let's say, within it. But like a Beatles album, let's say, who I don't know if the Beatles ever did two songs even remotely close to the same. Mm -hmm. um, it ties together with something, maybe Ian's guitar, because he's so tremendous on that thing. Oh, yeah. And a little bit of the voice, but even some of the voices change a little bit on this album. You know, I don't know. Why, but they did. Now, you you sing on every track? Yeah. You're right, because some of the tracks on this album are different. And I almost thought, that's not Robert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, and, you know, Ian gave me this freedom. At the end of the first album, he goes, I like it when your lyrics are more psychedelic, you know? And then you have right. these things you do, you know? He goes, with, with Sadler, the, you know, we have the voice. Yep in saga and that's the voice he goes well you got these things you do and all those different it's always he goes i love this listening to it to hear what you're going to do and on this one it sort of gave me the freedom to not tie the lyrics down quite as much you know leave it open for interpretation mm -hmm. the more psychedelic as ian would call it um and also i i did that with the the vocal treatment of some of the songs like especially like titans you know right. totally different than what i've ever done before well, I'm going to go over <clears throat> each track, um, and we're going to talk about that. First of all, man, I want to say you got a great voice. You really oh, do. You. It's very unique. You don't sound like anybody, in my opinion. That's you know? good. It, it, but it's, it, you got a great voice. I really like your voice. Well, I appreciate um, that. Here's what I said. I about never think album. of that. I'm, you know, I never think about myself as a singer. I'm I just know. a singer. You know. Yeah. It's just yeah. But you you are a good singer. You know, it just works out that way. Here's what I said about the album, okay? And if you want to put this on your website, it's okay with yeah. me. 
Um, mm-hmm. Beyond Shadowland by Supergroup, 6x6, six six, is an exceptional album performed by Masters of the Craft, a diverse masterpiece reflective of Rock's glory days. This one will definitely be at the top of your musical arsenal. Five stars. Nice. Good? Well. I mean that. <laughs> I guess my check showed up. It did. <laughs> <laughs> I cashed it today. <laughs> No, I, I appreciate it. I could tell you do you really do like it. And you, you were saying that I earlier, do. too. Uh, and I like the first album, too. I really yeah. did. I'm trying to make sure that we have accessible enough to find at least interesting the first listen. Mm-hmm. Deep right. enough to want to listen two or three more times. Because if nothing else, you want to see, what's Ian doing on the guitar? What's he doing there? Or what does that lyric mean? I mean, that seems kind of something that has some legs to it. It isn't just a thing that, oh, there it is, you know, radio uh, hit mm-hmm. or whatever you mm-hmm. want to call them now. Um, and I think it stands out from what I've been told by people. The second, third listen, even, they're finding new things all the time. Oh, yeah. You want to listen to it over and over again, too. It's it's one of those records, you know. Good. You want, you Good want to listen to it everywhere, in your car, you know, at the beach. Yeah. Yeah. I had Biff on not long ago, and I've had Michael Sadler on the show. Um, is Ian, t- he's touring, is he still touring with, with, uh, Saxon? Because they're playing with Uriah Heap now. N- Nigel. Yeah. Nigel. See, it's, the, yeah. The, it's the two, uh, Spinal Tap names that get everybody messed up. <laughs> Ian and uh, Nigel. Yeah. He's on a stadium tour right now. Uh-huh. We're not going out to September, October. So, oh, good. you know, you we sort of out. stated things and you don't leave your history behind, you right. know, it's, it's People want to hear it. Uh, Nigel's a big part of the Saxon history. Although um, we want to make six by six or the forefront mm-hmm. of our careers and right. then do all the things we do. I'm, I'm in the studio all the time, producing work with people. Um, I have my 3.2 stuff that I did with Keith Emerson that once in a while we go, we do a tour on that. So anyway, it's still going. Yeah, I promoted the hell out of that. Those the albums by the way you yeah, know i've had keith on the show keith was a great guy man he's a wonderful he's, guy you know, just, just the best great conversation mm-hmm. yeah yeah i bet you miss him a lot do you still talk to um carl palmer once in a while i speak yeah. to carl carl stays so busy he, he does just, he's playing all the time you know mm-hmm. um and i talked to bruce's manager about some things we still have a few live things coming out. There's a vinyl out right now and stuff for the three album after oh, wow. all these years. Really? The live, live three, yeah. Oh, cool. Um, That's going to be great. Yeah, I, Keith was a special uh, time in my life and continued on through many things we did together. And to lose him like that in the middle of an album, as you know, we've talked yeah. about it, was uh, a, just a blow. I, I thought it was done for me. I thought, I can't go on past this. This, this right. is the guy I wanted to do things with. My manager asked me, what would I do? I said, well, if I could find a guitar player like Keith Emerson was a keyboard player. That's what I want to do. I can't do a keyboard album anymore. Mm-hmm. He was the best. My heart and soul is like, well, what about Ian Crichton? Like, well, <laughs> well that, that was easy for the management to say. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I never would have. That was crazy. Yeah. And it has been the same kind of partnership for me Good. that uh, Keith was. And the same kind of creative genius, too, because yeah. Ian... When you turn him loose on six by six, he comes up with all these things that he can't do in Saga. Mm His Saga is more structured, you know? Right. And he continually (laughs) blows me away. How does he not only do what he's doing, but think of these things that he Mm -hmm. does? It's crazy. You You guys really mesh well together, man. You really do. I think so. I I hope. Uh, I'm glad you say that because I sure mm -hmm. think so. Yep. All right. Some of the tracks, Wren, which is about a bird, right? The name of a bird. Um, you said it was cherishing what you've learned while all the while taking chances, navigating life, and having fun doing it. I like that. That's really cool. That's a good song too. I like. The, I love the it, guitar. That that's a good song for radio play, isn't it? We thought it'd be one of the first singles. Record company picked yeah. other stuff. And it, what's interesting is <laughs> Ian sends me these little guitar parts. Same thing Keith did. Send me little parts. It's mm-hmm. my job to glue it all together, make a song out of them. Right. To start with. Then we get together, of course. But at first, you know, I got to put put it in some kind of format and write the missing pieces. And by the time I'm done, Ren's not in the lyrics anywhere. But 
it's got to be called Ren. Uh, uh, Ian, we're going to keep that title. He goes, okay, you know, I just did that so you knew what little pieces were. So I know, but it inspired me with the way the lyrics turned out. So those are titles he comes up with when they're not even songs. Wow. Yeah, some of these titles are, it just blew me away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> very cool. This this is very interesting because this hit home, The Arms of a Word. Um, I've got my th another book I'm writing right now. And that uh, this song is exactly what my book is about, ba basically, if I get this right. Um, it's kind of a um, 1984, newer version of 1984 is what the book's about. But it's journalism went to crap. And this new breed of jur journalists who admired the, you know, the, the Walter Cronkites of the world, right, come, or coming back, you know, after journalism, you know, with the fake news and um, AI well, we hope and everything. It, yeah, we hope it's coming back. Yeah, it, it needs, yeah. Well, in my book, they do. <laughs> but we have the military fighting each other in the United States. We got a, you know, a corrupt government. I mean, this. This song just hit perfectly, man. It, it, if I can make a movie out of my book, this is going to be the title song. It really is. It's perfect. The the what started me writing that was that everything that's any kind of media, except for music and art, mm -hmm. starts with some kind of clickbait. Like yes. if, if if you were in uh, whatever you're doing in, in that type of media, be saying. Robert Berry stabs himself during our show, right? Oh my God, what? And and you'd turn it around to say, yeah, but th that stabbing remark he made, but the headline would be stabs himself, right? right the right. clickbait thing, it just drives me nuts. You can't believe anything you hear, read, see, I know. anything anybody says, unlike our kind of media with the, the music media and, and some art things where people are trying to spread so, like goodwill, you know, right. hey, this is cool, listen to this, or these lyrics mean something. It's always a positive, and but that's not what the media has been. And I I don't know how to stop it, but the, <laughs> the arms of a word, you know. The, yeah. they, some people say, "Well, I like that song, the arms of the word." I said, "No, it's not the, because that sounds religious, right? Right, right, the right. Arms of the word, the Bible. You know, it's it's not that. It, it's the words you speak and the words that are printed and things." You know, we need to care about that more because it leads us the wrong way. And then most of these places stay deep in the uh, the, the, the mud, mm -hmm. trying to keep you there with the clickbait and the bad stuff and never any good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, in my book, it, there's a botched uh, nuke attack on American soil on um, actually the good guys took over area 51 yeah because that was a good it was a good base for them and the bad guys in the government tried to nuke them and then i noticed your video the music video is that an icbm in that in that video yeah 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 you, yeah you, there's, there's, yeah it sort of <laughs> ties in even man. more yeah it's amazing i'm glad i'm glad you you say it was a failed attempt it wasn't failed book. attempt. We stopped them. <laughs> Man, very cool. I mean that that the, it just blew me away when I when I heard the song. Man, it's great. Um, can't live like this. Also, a very different sound. You know, very very cool. But I think the track the band loves the most. Now, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> Abilex. Abilex. You see, you're looking at it the right way. I, I, Ian sent this to me on a snippet, and I said, "Well, that's weird." But it's obli, right? It's so O B L I, right? And I say, Ian, is that O obli obli X? I, 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 how do you say it? He goes obli X. Obli X. No, it's O B L I L I L obli li X. Where did he get that? So. <laughs> He spelled something wrong just to tag that. <laughs> it means nothing. It's a new word that means nothing. And there's a cartoon or something, Obliex and something else in Canada that he used to watch. He's little sweet. He just spelled it wrong by mistake. And I said, 
we're going to have a song where you say it differently than me. Nobody's going to be able to pronounce it. Nobody's going to know what it is, but they're going to remember it. And to me, um, I think it's the most beautiful song in the album. The, the guitar solo just blows me away. It's so uh, like soaring, but so raw, but beautiful at the same time. And I said, we're just going to keep that name. It's undescribable. <laughs> I looked all over the place for the meaning of that word. I, <laughs> I couldn't find you know, it. <laughs> if if that doesn't make the song stick with somebody right there. <laughs> Obliex. Obliex. I like that. I like that. They they should name a uh the next space mission or something after that or next rocket. Obliex. I like it's that. A, a silent L in the middle yeah. of the word. <laughs> right. I love it. That the video itself is that Mars? Um, it, it, I believe it lands on Mars. Um, I, I had a whole thing with that. Right. The, the video guy who's in Austria, the Austrian, the mountains of Austria. Okay. Well, I wanted him to land there. And because it's about finding euphoria, basically, you know, leaving all this crap <clears throat> behind, Let, right. let's find the peace and love. We could do it here, but this guy is going to leave here. And I wanted him to land on Mars and Martin Luther King, mother Mary, uh, yeah, um, John Lennon. They're all there already. He's like, oh my yep. God, they found it before me. Right. He couldn't make that happen in a good enough way, but that's was my dream, right? Awesome. Look at I like that. Um, Mother Teresa. You know, right. they're all there before. Like, oh my God, they were looking for the same thing. Mm -hmm. They found it. You know, um, if I explain it enough, maybe people will see that ending in their head. When sure. They listen. Yeah, it's in my head now. <laughs> Yeah, that so was the name of the song, right? Which is Obx. Obx. <laughs> Obx. You really have to think. Oh, that's funny. I love it. It's oh, tough. Awesome. I like it though. <laughs> it's very addicting. The song, you know. I I think I played it like four or five times. I couldn't stop. <laughs> well, and it goes on for a ways. It's not as a standard format. It's got four verses. It kind of goes on and it has a little yep. middle. It's it it's it is what it is, and it just it came out. It, that way. it wasn't a struggle that song. It yep. just came out. It, was like, it just wow. came out. Yeah. You know, I, I, another powerful tune is Titans. I mean, <clears throat> that is so different. It's such a cool <laughs> song. You know, I'm I'm going to read the definition of the song, everybody, because I loved it. It's the identification of strong people all around us. They might be the silent warriors waiting to rise up and defend the world, but they are there. They are the investors, inventors, businessmen, school teachers, which I love because my daughter and my son-in-law are both school teachers and my sister-in-law. They silently lead influence and they flourish. They may be the ones that ignore the rules, but one thing is for sure, they will accomplish what they set out to do. I love that. That's a great, great. Did you come up with that? That's uh that's what I'm hoping. Um, you, I don't want to guide anybody really because right. Titans, like Ian says, Oh, I didn't think that's Titan. Titans are the, you know, the warriors. Okay. And of course, Nigel is into like German warfare and right. and, and tanks. So he now he gets all that bidding from England, you know, and he goes, Oh, well, I didn't think of that either. I said, well, I, I just feel that the real strength in the world isn't the big mouth sort of complaining about everything mm, and right. saying what they're going to do and not doing it. It's the people that make it work. Yeah. You know, unsung heroes, maybe. Yeah. Especially the teachers. My wife's a teacher, yeah. second grade teacher. I got to tell you, she's been doing it 25 years. Mm -hmm. When they come back from 20 to last one, 22 years ago, Mrs. Berry, you were the greatest teacher I ever had. There's not a better reward because you affected that life. That's in right. Kind of silent, strong, Titans way. No, Amazing. I remember all the names of my teachers in grade school. You know, really? how is that possible? You know, first grade, wow. second, I know all my all the names. I can still remember. I can still picture them in my my head. You know? Interesting. Yeah, they don't get the respect they they should get, especially now. You know, especially in high school. That's that's you know, my kids are high school teachers. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's yep. that's a tough one. I mean, they're they're getting pretty pretty strong and, and pretty uh empowered with things that my God, you say the wrong thing. A high school 
<clears throat> kid can take you to court. You know? I know. <laughs> they it, it, they know true. what to do. I go, what? Yeah. Gee, what yeah, how many times they, they, they actually change the grade of the student because of the parents? <laughs> Because they insist, it's, you know. There's some weird stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, there was an excerpt in this in Titans. It kind of sounded Arabic, which I like. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. It is Arabic. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Very, cool. very cool. Um, outside looking in, another cool rocker. I mean, you guys really jam on this album too. You know, you know. There's some great guitar stuff. I tell you. The outside looking in was something that I was thinking about. Um, they, I think everybody sees us that we know as a little bit different person. Because, you know, what, what you mean to me, mm -hmm. sitting there with your microphone and obviously deep into music, I guess that's you in the background playing that guitar back there. So, yeah, I mean, me. you know, I mean, what you mean to me is different than your, your daughter, let's say the teacher, right. your wife, whoever. Um, the guy at the music store that sold you all this equipment, we all see each a different you, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I sort of wonder sometimes what people really, what they see me as. I have so many different hats I have to wear. <laughs> the only thing I don't do is sweep up, and I should, because it's dirty in this studio. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw you in the beginning as a member of ELP. <laughs> yeah. The third member from Emerson Lake and Palmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know, they used to call us Emerson, Lake, and Barry, and it used to drive Carl Palmer crazy. <laughs> he goes, Lake's not in the band. That's funny. <laughs> I had all those guys on the show, uh, especially Greg Lake. It's so funny because they would kind of curse at each other. Uh, I, I don't know if it was Carl Palmer. He, you know, I said, yeah, I just had Greg Lake on the show. And, he's, you know, he said, oh, you had that fat bastard on your show. You know, that's where they were. It's so funny. That, that was probably <laughs> Keith that said that. That's probably Keith. You're with, right. When you're on right. tour, he... I, you know, it was funny because they always kept me away from Greg until uh, Keith and Greg did a solo tour with a drum machine. Uh -huh. And they were in San Francisco. Keith said, I'm doing this documentary. I want you in there. Can you meet me up here? So I went to see him thinking, the drum machine. Oh, my God. And after the first song, it was okay because mm -hmm. those two were the genius. And then I met Greg and he was so warm, so friendly. And then I took a look at what they did without him. Um, I thought, wow, this Greg Lake was really half the genius. I, not to put Carl aside, he's just the drummer, but he's a fantastic. Right. <clears throat> but Keith and Greg, that balance between the two, oh, yeah. it wouldn't happen without that folky part and that mm -hmm. mad scientist part, you know. Yep. Anyway, well, Greg had Greg had the voice, man. He was he had a great oh, voice. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, I finally yeah. got to meet him though, and he was a great guy, and yeah. we got along great. So uh, I was happy about that. Because then yeah. he was gone shortly, you know. I know. It's eight years after. Oh. Sad, isn't it? All these guys yeah. are leaving us, man. I can't take it. Yeah. You know? You look great, by the way. You look like you're 39 years old. I have a special lighting. And you know that tape they put behind <laughs> you? <laughs> and, and I spent a lot of time doing this before you got online here. Yeah. No, actually, yeah, I, you, you keep in good shape. I have I I've always eaten well. Good. I've always taken care of myself. I never mm -hmm. smoked. Never did zero mm -hmm. drugs, and nobody. Well, maybe Carl Palmer didn't do any drugs. I'm not sure. I never asked him. He's so healthy. But everybody else I was around. Sammy Hagar I played with. I mean Keith even. Mm -hmm. Lots of drugs. Lots of. Uh, I think as they got older, caused them some problems. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I've always been really positive. You'll, you'll find that in lyrics too. Even if it's a little negative slant wise, like can't live like this, you know, right. there's a solution in there. I'm looking for the positive. I got that from my mom. She was just mm -hmm. never had a bad day in her life, you yeah. know, and she, that's the really the way to be, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We get so much from my, our parents, you know? Yeah. Well, my wife's that way too. Rebecca is, well, as a second grade teacher, you kind of have to be perky and energetic <laughs> anyway, but she is just so positive and people, they sort of ignite when they meet her, you know, mm -hmm. she just has that aura about her. So that's around me all the time too. Yeah. Plus, I mean, I'm, you know, look, look at this. I mean, look at this studio. Right. Yeah. It's beautiful. Look at that. That's incredible. I mean, and then my Vox amps, you see the Vox over there? Mm -hmm. I walk in and 
it, it, it empowers me. I, I just, I built the kind of place that I always wanted to have. And I get to do the kind of work I always wanted to do. And luckily, fortunately, people like you um, get the word out to a wider audience <laughs> than I can in this little hut here. And uh, I, I have a charmed life. I'm, I'm, I don't know what else I can say. My first amplifier was a Vox. Did did you build your Vox or did it already come assembled? My dad, when I was a little guy, had the Vox guitar and amp store in San Jose here. Really? So wow. I can remember seven years old or so, my mom and dad going to San Francisco, meeting the boat, mm -hmm. taking the station wagon, putting a Vox Super Beetle, an AC-30, an AC-10, in that station wagon and driving back and my mom getting out going oh these wait till you see these these are just beautiful <laughs> wow. and they they brought them out and oh, wow you know look at that I, I, of course they were way taller than me mm -hmm. i still have the ac10 the very first one really? imported yep uh, yeah of course if you don't know the beatles use vox <laughs> that's right and therefore my dad did very well with his music store Mm -hmm. yeah. what year was that you, you know they import everything from england and you know I, i'm trying to go by vox chrono chronology here could it be 66 i actually don't know that's a good um, year that was a good year it, it could have been because yeah. the beatles i think were around till the 70 maybe i don't know 70 yeah, yeah. so you know he had a, the, the vox english then they made him in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and he he just did great with all that. All the guys, yeah. all the bands, the well-known bands here. We had a band called the Count Five. Had Psychotic Reaction, yeah. Syndicate of Sound, Hey Little Girl. Yep. The guys from Jefferson Airplane would come down and see the Vox stuff. Mm. Um, it, he had one of the guys teaching here, uh, Skip Spence from Moby Grape. Skip, yeah, yeah. It it was like, and I just saw these guys. I was a little guy watching them bring in these really beautiful girls thinking, this music thing looks like a good way to go. <laughs> that was in Frisco, right? Was that Frisco? Well, I'm in San Jose, which is 45 okay. minutes south from San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. And okay. For some reason, uh, the places, the clubs that paid money mm -hmm. were here. San Francisco never paid, you know, um, the clubs are the Mabuhe and some of these, they were really small, didn't pay that much. But in the San Jose, which is now Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. uh, they paid better. So the guys that would always play around, even Doobie Brothers, who are from San Jose, right. would play in these places around here and make some money. You know? hmm. Yeah, the Doobies played a lot of biker bars back in the day. Yeah. Yes, they played a place up in the mountains. Um, Oh, I forget the name of it now. Uh, Chateau Chateau Liberté, right? Where right. the Hell's Angels kind of ran yeah, and stuff. You know, that's right? I was uh, I I was too young to go to those places, but there's a book and a movie about it now. So I'm going, yeah. wow! They were all around. This area is so big, uh, including San Francisco, of course. More famous top sellers were from the San Francisco Bay Area than any other place in the world. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. The, the only other place that really sticks out, I think, is Detroit. You know, Detroit had all Detroit, the, the garage. And bands. of course, England, you know, which yeah. isn't that big. But when you you wouldn't think the San Francisco area would be the biggest. But when right. you add it up, it's like, wow, it's it, I've never liked the San Francisco music that much. I was always <laughs> English. I like the English stuff. Me too. You know? Yeah. Jimmy Cream and uh, yeah. Jethro Tull and Yes and all Me that. Too. that was my favorite. Yeah. I, I like the prog stuff. Yeah. I really do. Um, Spectre, when I saw that title, I, I thought of James Bond, of course, you know, the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. Great guitar in that one. Um, another one, Sympathize. Man, he really had fun with these titles. <laughs> well, and that that one actually has the word in the lyrics. That Nigel and I worked on that. Really? And it was funny. Uh I couldn't get Ian into it at first. He goes, I, yeah, I sent him a little bit of it. He goes, I, I don't know. I, so I decided I was going to sort of trick him. Mm -hmm. I hope he doesn't hear this. He probably will. <laughs> so I sent him back two measures with like a little click track 
and me banging a piano. I said, could you change that to guitar? You know, make that. So he sent me back the two measures. <laughs> I got that. Then I needed something else. I said, well, here's, you know, this thing here. Um, I did the same thing on part of Titans. I said, I need every sound you can make in that guitar mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with a note, the music. Right. And that thing that's going yeah, on. Very Those interesting. Those are all guitar yeah. sounds. Huh. And he didn't know what it was going to be used for. And uh, I put it all together, and every blip and squeak he could think of, he sent me. He's crazy. I go, man, this guy, <laughs> he's crazy. Um, yeah, so Sympathize, we sort of put together that way. And when I sent him the whole song with his parts in it and everything, went, hey, that's a good song. <laughs> it's a yeah. great song. I didn't want to say that's the same one I sent you that didn't have your parts that mm -hmm. I wanted you to work on and put the parts in. <laughs> you know? Like I said, every intro is different. It's very different intros. It's like you planned on creating different intros on each track, you know? It's Or it just happened that part, way. No, it's, it's part of my vision. of Like when I was with GTR, right. you know, they had an album with the two guitar players that sound like synthesizer. To True. Me. And True. I got in GTR and said, this needs to have more Steve Howe guitar in it. And that's the direction. With this band... I feel if we don't start with some great Ian Crichton riff, right? We're not, I don't know, getting the icing on the cake right off the bat, right? Exactly. I don't want to wait for that. I want it to happen and 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 add fire to it. Yeah. I mean, even in uh, Obliex, mm -hmm. the little guitar thing that starts is beautiful. You know, that the thing he he just played a, a beautiful part there. It starts with him. It's great. Yeah. It, it kind of gives it the band a, a kind of a signature sound you know which is great yeah yeah i try not to analyze it too much because what we do mm -hmm. all three of us do it the way we want to do it that's why we're doing this band right the confines of the other bands even my three thing with the keyboard oriented stuff there's confines to me in that i want to do exactly what i want to do with this and if ian do it and nigel do it and see what it creates sure and so far two albums worth that's what's happened yep no. And you and you you're working on the third one right now. Wow. Yeah, that's why when you said I don't want to go down all the songs and titles, oh, well, I I should know them, okay, because <laughs> I've got new stuff, you know. <laughs> you're already thinking about the new stuff, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it's for me. Um, of course, we're going to be touring, so I have to know them all and be able to sing them all and play them all. But I sort of. Uh, clear cleanse the palate of all that when i'm working on something new right and because i do so much in the studio every five days a week i'm in the studio with somebody if it's not me and the band i'm with some other musicians um i've learned at night to not remember what i've done that day or i'll be singing it all night in my head and True. be awake all night i just have to purge yeah, it that makes sense so i don't do that with the album in general but like the lyrics and the meaning of them, okay, uh, let me think of <laughs> Spectre. Because uh, again, Spectre, the title gives me no hint. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't. <laughs> um, when you go on tour, are you going to be playing the next album, introducing the next album, or is it going to be more of this album? Or both? I think we're going to do the first two albums I have an idea um, to do little hints, maybe as little bridges between right. the songs of something on the new album. But um, I don't think we're going to be ready. We're going out September. We have three dates in, in Germany and Netherlands already. Um, we have Prize Clock here in uh, what New Jersey area mm -hmm. in September. We're trying to get to Puerto Rico. We've been top 10 for two months in Puerto Rico on the radio there. Really? So we think, yeah, they want us to do a concert, and then we're going to we're filling in in between, but we don't know what that's going to be quite yet. Hmm. So I think the first two albums are going to be the mainstay of it. Although I told Ian the other day I'd like to do like uh, at the end of Sympathize, do 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 the riff from uh, Saga. You know, I forget right. the song. The wind them up would turn me loose whatever it's called <laughs> you know a couple of hints we'll pick a, a big song that has a riff in it of saxon and tag one of the songs of that cool. just as a little 
little candy kind of. Yeah, yeah. You you know what country is gotten really hot with uh, touring now? Great reception is Chile. Really? Huh? Yes. A lot of people are saying great feedback from Chile. Mark Varner did a whole live album from Chile. Yeah. You know, you know, that was unexpected. You know, I know that um, Nigel was there end mm-hmm. of last year with Saxon. I'm not sure. Uh, Ian's in South America right now playing a few places. Right. So, um, but only three shows. So I, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, I'll have to check on that. I, yeah. I know that the record company won't service them because as soon as they put out an album there, they bootleg it. And you really? can't, the record Is that company right? can't make money. So huh. that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Good crowd, though. Very receptive, you know? Yeah. You, you got to talk about um, One Step. I mean, you say it was written about a guy who really let you down. Is that you or is somebody else talking? It was me. It was you, um, but you were yeah. wrong, right? You say you say you were wrong about the. Yeah, you know everybody um, is leading a different life, right? right. And you, sometimes you have to put yourself in their their shoes. Um, I thought this guy, sort of, he he just left. He just just said, "I'm I'm going this way." Just gone. Hmm. Well, as I look back for his life. He wasn't going to do what I did with my career and in music or whatever, you know. And these days, my son's a musician. I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> I'd be saying, run, you should change your path, right? You cannot <laughs> yes. make a living in music um, unless you, you have your, your feet planted in it for the last 30, 40 years. Right. But um, as I look back, it was the right decision for him. Mm-hmm. And it didn't affect me in a bad way because no matter a, a good outcome or a bad outcome, you still have to move forward. Mm-hmm. Even when things are good, you know, okay, what's going to happen next? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that uh, it's a negative song, but then again, not really. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is this guy uh, an artist today? Is he a musician that? Is well known not, or no? No. Not even in it you, whatsoever. Just yeah. gave it up. Gave it up totally. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of strange with all that he did, you know. And yeah. How about that? Yeah. No names. Can't no I names. can't say any names because he's a good guy. Yeah, good. No, we'll keep it that way. Yeah. Well, the final cut on the album on 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 the uh C D because there are extended songs on the vinyl you got yes. um uh, yeah you have a six by six orchestra med- medley um you have an instrumental of arms of a word honor yeah. bridge and another instrumental of the mission and that's on your and that's a double vinyl right yeah very cool yeah but uh, honor bridge is something that the band's never heard i mean it was pieces that were here really that i said you know they want they wanted a couple instrumentals um and i thought well why not okay um i had a orchestra in budapest i orchestrated this road i i majored in music in college so i know mm-hmm. how to do this but yep. i to, to have an orchestra here would be so expensive hire an orchestra in budapest to do it there's a video i think the record company is going to put out on that which is pretty cool um 30 piece orchestra and this big you know it's like john williams conducting nice. the star wars theme you know very nice. um but I took these little pieces and glued them together of things we were uh, thinking about using and didn't use. And it, because it's on the vinyl, Ian doesn't have a record player. Nigel doesn't have a record <laughs> player. They'll never hear it, right? So I'm waiting for someone to say, hey, man, I, I made a copy of this for you. <laughs> hey, that, those are things we didn't use. You know, It makes it interesting, I think, for all of us in an in odd way. Yeah. Mm. Well, there's a lot more vinyl out there. I mean, it, it you know, Rolling Stone said it it actually passed CD sales. That was a bunch of crap. Well, <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. Rolling know, Stone magazine has not been decent for 40 years, and I I can say that. <laughs> I I don't know how they keep getting people to buy it and, and I don't read know. it. But there's very little music in there, and um, 
It's it's very liberal slanted. And I don't care if it's going to be liberal. You know, I, I want to see both sides to a story. I right. don't need to, to hear yeah. one side. You know, I don't need to hear what an idiot somebody is when you know damn well that all politicians are idiots. They're all idiots. Uh, all I care about is what they get done. <clears throat> They're going to be an idiot if they can get done. Me too. This border problem. Yeah. The gasoline problem. Um, see, homelessness. I mean, in California, it's so oh, it's disgusting. Horrible. It is disgusting. We're, the, we're probably the fifth largest, but I always say the seventh largest economy in the world, right? Not in the United States. In the world, which means we're probably a bigger economy than Italy, you mm -hmm. know, France. And we have all these homeless encampments. And last year we had $42 billion in surplus. This year we had a deficit. Now, come on. They, <laughs> someone's got to help these people. Get them a job. Get them working. I don't care if it's just cleaning up the forest. Right. Get them something. Give them some self-worth. And let's at least try to fix this problem. The mayor of San Jose is the first guy that I've seen that says, look, we don't have housing. We can't take care of everybody. If you want to live in your car, our uh, light rail parking lot, we're going to make half of it. We can park your car and live in it. I mean, that's better than nothing, right? Because most places are kicking these people out if they park in their car and they want to sleep there. Mm -hmm. You can't stay here. You can't be on the street. He's coming up with some solutions. So at least people have an alternative place to live while they try to get the next solution going, you know, right. that's no, it's not so simple. You know, my, my son works with pilot, you know, the, the big truck stop company. Oh, yeah. They're, they're huge. He's a regional manager. He's, he yeah. travels all over the place, but you know, th there's a place where truckers spend the night. All you got to do is create a huge parking lot for all the homeless and let them park there. You know, what's the yeah. big deal? L at least start. That's a start. Yeah, you know? exactly. And then, there's a bunch of jobs that people could do to make a little money. They're, if they could have to sleep in their car, they can make a little money for food. Yeah. They feel like they're earning it. And of course, we have a lot of mentally ill here, so they're going to have to be taken care of in a different way. Right. But give people some self-pride. I don't know how I got on this, but it, it just agree. really, you I know, agree. I just want people with solutions. Here's how I'm going to fix that and then do it. You know, they're all lazy. They're lazy. You know, they, they, I don't get it. You know, Hollywood, you know, the, the, the uh, empty spaces now in Hollywood and, and Rodeo Drive, there's so many empty stores. It's incredible. You San know, Francisco. they're all for leased. They're all for leased. They all moved out. Yeah, San Francisco has lost some of their biggest people like, like Macy's or, you know, I mean, things yeah. that have been the iconic San Francisco stores. Well, I have a friend that owns hotels and he refinances to get things, you know, to get money for other hotels, all these things. He do. he can't get a refine right now because they say we're not interested in investing in anything in San Francisco. Wow. He's been doing this for 30 years. Never had a problem, you know. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I'll make a statement. I love our I love our governor here in Florida because he, he's pro very proactive and he gets things done. I and think if he does he doesn't thing. agree with me, they can go screw themselves. <laughs> well, you know what? And I don't care if I agree with all his policies or not. I don't know all of them, but he gets it done. He does get right? it done. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't have to agree for you to say this is gonna work. You're an idiot, but go ahead, give it a try. Right. Try, give it a try. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Do something. Do something. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do something. Yeah, no, he's done. He's done really uh, well, and he's not afraid to get up there no. and say, "That's what I'm doing." I'm not yeah. going to apologize to you. He's, he's tackled Disney. You know, he's won a lot of that because they didn't pay their share of you know taxes and that kind of thing. And what and they should, you know, yeah, but, they charge enough money. Yeah, definitely, and they make enough money. And they make enough money. Exactly. And of course, it's a whole other issue. Yeah. <laughs> But he's he's always signing something into legislation. You know, he's always signing something. That's good. Yeah. Well, that was an interesting song. The mission is is your final cut. Kind of had a Zeppelin opening in a way. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and it's going to be actually it's being worked on right now. The third really? single release out next Tuesday. Good, another um, single. Awesome. And again, one of my favorite lyrically mm -hmm. because you know life's mission is. Yes. The mission, right? And 
Um, right. But I didn't think it was going to be a single. Record company really likes that song and believes Good. in it. And they think it will launch the album in the right way because the album comes out just a few days after that single. So, good, good, good. Yeah. What about the graphic novel? I started one here. This is funny. A <laughs> few people have said, hey, when's the next graphic novel happening? I said, well, in the first one, JC Baez called me and said, hey, you know, I really like your music. I want to do a graphic novel. And I said, well, I got this new thing, six by six. Let's do one. He goes, well, what's the story? I said, well, I have 11 songs, a story. But give me a week. And I rejuggled them, Rubik's Cube, you know, dominoes. And it actually, I could write a story with it. This time, I said, JC, are we going to do a second one? He goes, I'm ready. Let's do it. He goes, what's the story? I said, well, let me think about it. And I was just writing the songs. And it messed me up. I couldn't write the story hmm. and the songs at the same time. Because then I had these confines. I got this box I got to put things in. And it was really hard, the first couple of songs, to get them out, to think, where's the next one going to go? Where's the story going to lead? So I said, you know what? I, I can't do this graphic novel right now. I, I, I got to think of it after the album's all done and things are happening. So we definitely got a few drawings, got a few ideas, got a story started. Right. But um, until, I don't know, until I'm done practicing <laughs> for the tour, you know, um, it, the plan is to do a second graphic novel. I just okay. haven't had the, the time doing a lot of promotion right now, a lot of writing, a lot of learning, uh, you figure out the sets. And what we're going to do is a three piece, the tour uh, so far. So I got to mm, do the wow. Getty Lee role, you know, I gotta power play trio. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, busy. Yeah, definitely. Ah, huh. I don't. What was the last trio? Was Rush the last uh, power trio? I guess I know Robin Trower for a while. Um, well, I I, know. You know, I always thought Nirvana was a trio at first, but I think they had another guitar player mm. with them. I'm not sure. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Okay, my favorite song by you guys of all time is "Save the Night." Ah. That's the very first song by the band I've heard on Morrow.com. I well, love that it, song, man. It has done the best for us. And the, the views and stuff on YouTube are huge. That is the, the goalpost for this album to meet that or exceed it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the tour is going to help a lot now. We're going to actually be in front of people. I just had um, set up the live shoot probably in the Netherlands um, multi-camera shoot to get a live DVD of this thing. Good. And say, yeah, see, because we can't get everywhere <laughs> this year. We just are too busy to, you know, maybe we'll do 10 dates, but we can't do the 30, 40, what we need to do. Right. So yeah, we've got a shoot set up now and I'm excited about that. But see, I'm so busy with things, you know, just getting that set and getting this next video ready and well, talking to you, you take up a lot of time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that. <laughs> but that is my favorite song. Um, cool. The uh, you got background singers in that, right? Yes, yeah, so I hired a couple girls uh, from Oakland, California. They're great. A long time ago, I did a thing for a movie uh, for Paramount. It's Raining Men which is sort of a gay anthem and it was used in the dick, <laughs> the dictator or some of those movies where this guy who was driving down the street and kind of this song came on and everybody started look, it made him nervous. Right. So it was supposed to, to make this guy nervous. And this girl um, did such a fantastic job that it tracked her back down. I said, I have to have the end of this song. It needs to explode. Right. And she brought a friend down to sing and, uh, it, I, I I just I love it. It's exciting. It keeps going. I got some great guitar soloing in there. We won't be bringing her on tour. The wife said, "X that idea." The, the wife mm. said, "No women on the, the oh, in the band." Man. No, I didn't. No, that's not what <laughs> <laughs> but you know, originally I had an idea that when we do a bigger tour, I'd like to get every region, let's say, get maybe two female singers from bands that have female singers. And have them come sing harmony with us and change them all the time to represent that region, give them some notoriety, some reviews and get them on stage. 
it's just a, a crazy idea I have that mm-hmm. I hope next year when we do a bigger tour, right. then maybe I can implement that. Sure. I just had Durga McBroom on the show. Great. And her yep. and her sister would probably be more than happy oh. to do it. <laughs> yeah, crazy good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know where they live. Do they live in L.A.? Or I don't even know. Um, when I talked to her, she was only here temporarily. I think she lives overseas. No. I think she is maybe Germany. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, th- I think that, you know. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Yeah. They're great That's show. exactly what I'm talking about, though. You know, she, she, some... she does a lot with Dave Kersner. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. On a lot of his albums. Just real quickly, I just want to mention some of my other favorite songs on the first album, China, which was very interesting. Kind of a political statement there. It um, is. And, yeah. and I, I'm a little worried about playing it. Um, because some people, just a couple, got the wrong idea. It actually is supporting the Chinese people. Right. It's only yeah. against the government of exterminating some monks and different things they do. I know. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, Richard Gere would like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reason to feel calm again. You know. You know what I? Uh, I had a kind of a. Beatles, baby, you're a rich man vibe in that. Can, well, that's can, you hear that? Has that? He's got that incredible uh, bagpipe guitar thing. We're actually thinking about starting the show with that if we want to start slow. We're just not sure yet, but that's got a vibe to it, that beginning. That... How's he do that? Because it did, I, did sound like a bagpipe. Yeah, and I said, Ian, that... Can you get that sound again? Yeah, of course I can. I got it once. Well, we tried to punch in a couple notes because I needed a little extra somewhere, and it didn't sound the same. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm giving um, away too many secrets here. I know. That's I'm doing my job, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Casino was a cool track because it, it was definite prog. That was definitely a prog tune. Yeah, definitely, you know? yeah. And uh, really loved it. That, that that great album. I, I give that one five stars too, man, because it was so good. Cool. Um, we always talked about December people in the past. Did you get, did you do anything with the December people this past Christmas? I've broken that up for now. Oh, did you? Um, yep. I tried for ten years. Uh, yep. Three different managers. They all failed. Um, the one thing I can't do is manage a band. I can't get the bookings and stuff. It's just not, I don't, it's like doing my taxes for me. A lot. You know, it just puts me in a bad mood. And I rely on management to, to make things, at least just that piece of it. We can, we don't need a babysitter in December people or six by six, but we mm-hmm. need a guy that has business sense and connected. I think it's one of the best things I've ever done Great. for charities. And, it, and it's just fun. And people, they sing along without even knowing that we're doing night before Christmas, like stairway to heaven. Let's say, yeah. you know, they don't, they, but the, when you see us for the first time, you get it. I have half an album done. I'm going to do a new one. I want to do it for this year, but this six by six thing is taken off. So I don't know. I know. Um, I'm going to do some of the female acts. I have a Joan Jett, a Deck the Halls already. Uh, awesome. A heart tune. I'm going to do some of that and do half and half. And I think it's going to be really great. We'll see. If I can help in any way, I don't know if you need somebody around Christmas time or touring or funding yeah. you know, venues or whatever. Let me know because I do have a good business background. I was I was in the banking industry for fifteen oh. years. I noticed you had a copy machine there. Do you print your own tens or what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, only hundred dollar bills. Oh, you mean you were really in the banking business? No, no, oh. I was in the banking. Yeah, yeah, I did commercial lending, and I used to lend out, you know, fifteen, twenty million dollars to big corporations. You know, yeah. plus I was an entrepreneur. I owned several businesses. And, cool. uh, so if I can help in if, any way, just let me know. Because if if you, the whole thing is that a manager has to have a booking mm-hmm. agent, sort of as their partner and that agent can say to a theater, these guys are going to knock you dead Mm -hmm. for the first time in after that, every place we played, they want us back. They love it. They really, the the, the concert goers are like, wow, when they buy so many CDs from us and, and merch and stuff, 
but they have to be able to open that door the first time and yep. nobody wants to take a chance anymore without a guarantee right. so that is a struggle that i can't deal with and the managers haven't been able to crack hmm. so that it we'd be out there playing every november and december if yeah. we had that guy that could open those doors you know and as you know with the albums <clears throat> uh, we have lots of material and so really fun and Definitely. people respond to it but well, I know I know the DC area because I'm originally from DC, Virginia, and Maryland, and I know the Florida markets. So, well, I know those two markets. Uh, Florida. I mean, at <clears throat> one point, I talked to somebody because Florida has all those retirement villages with the biggest and best venues in them of anywhere, yep. and we're doing Zeppelin, Beatles, you know, Santana. They would love you there. All, they would love you there. You yeah. think it'd be a shoe in? Yeah. Right. And I couldn't get an agent th to do it. Um, I, it was sort of heartbreaking, really. I, mm -hmm. I, I put so much into that that I love. And I, I'll never give it up. But um, if I'm going to go to battle, you know, with my armor on, it's going to be for six by six mm -hmm. right now. And yeah. maybe December people will just all of a sudden the gates will open. You never sure. know. You know, people don't realize, a lot of people don't realize when you think of older people and, and their music. The days of Sinatra and Andy Williams, it's gone. The older people are the Woodstock generation. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, that's right. They're, you know, the Beatles are going to be really oldies pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, you know, know. <laughs> look how old they are, man. Yeah. 80 <laughs> years old. My God. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But yeah, okay. that's right. And that's with all the stuff we did, even um, the Hotel California is um, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. you know. It, the people, the Eagles fans are all ages, of course. The end of that song, all those Eagles riffs that go on for all those soloing, it started when I did it. It had a Christmas carol for the first two measures and the Eagles riff to end it. Mm -hmm. And there was like 30 of those for the end. There's a lot of them. And just right there, people, Look, that's part of Jingle Bells. Oh, that's part of Deck the Halls, right? Right. And Gary and... and uh, Jack Foster had to learn all that. And Gary, who plays in the band Boston, had to play my inside out version of the Boston medley. Um, I forget what song it even is now, but anyway, it goes on and on. I had Gary on the show. He's a good guy, too. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> He's the best. Yeah, he is the best. The, the December people, though, man, it's such a great idea. You know, I, I just love the music. I can identify with it 100 percent and I, yeah. I really wish it would take off big time you know well, i appreciate it. i really I appreciate it. you know I, I just thought about one song i went i wonder what you can turn into a christmas song how about black hole sun <laughs> can you turn that into a christmas song <laughs> you know it's funny i i i really have to think about it and sit down with it and start turning it inside out because i haven't been able to do a stone song to my satisfaction huh how about Everything that? else fits like a glove perfectly. Right. It's like Emmanuel could have been the hit for the Eagles. It fits so perfect, right? Yeah. Um, the Stone stuff, I haven't been able to make fit like a glove. And I've oh. tried five different songs. Sympathy for the Devil, um, Honky Dog Woman. You'd think it'd be easy, right? You, it's Yeah. How about Paint It Black? It depends oh. on what song fits the mold. The problem with Christmas songs, they have like four lines or right. 20 lines in a chorus. There's nothing to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Santa Claus is coming to town and it's easy top LaGrange. You know, dang, 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 dang. I know. There, it's great. There's enough hook for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I better not cry. There's <laughs> enough hook in it where it just works, fits like a glove, you know? And Honky Tonk Woman with the riff I thought would work. And there just wasn't enough hmm. Christmas Carol that matched it. So even Satisfaction, you would think, you know, would be a good Christmas song. I've tried a lot. Yeah, you know, yeah. and a lot of times people say, "Well, where's your dun 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 dun?" And you go, right. "Well, what say uh, up on the rooftop?" No, no, it's yeah, not it yeah. changing the melody of Satisfaction. It's the actual melody of "Up on the Rooftop." that has to go into satisfaction. Right. So right. that's why you can sing it the first time you see us, because it's the song you know, Silent Night, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Mm -hmm. Perfect match, right? It was so good. 
you could sing along with us. You know, Silent Night. You had so much experience now with Christmas music. You should create your own original Christmas song. Because if that hits, you're going to be a multimillionaire. Well, each, <laughs> album, yeah, each album had one on it, actually. We had uh, Christmas Calling. Um, I, I can't remember them all now. I'm in six by six mode, you know. But yeah, yeah we yeah. did. We had three, uh, three or four of the albums had original songs on mm. one original song. Um, to crack it again, you know, to to it, get those venues to book us and have us play, hmm. um, should have been easy, but it wasn't. Should be easy. I, I can't. I don't know. And you should have a PR person dedicated just to the band, to that band, to that music. You know? It's the it's the agents that have the theaters that really have to put their neck on the line and say, I guarantee you will not lose with this December people thing. Right. You're gonna love it, you know, but mm -hmm. haven't found that person. I've actually recommended a few venues and set up venues to some artists. I got um Porky Lang a gig here in Florida. Yeah. So yeah. I can I can do it. I, I I know a lot of the uh the bookers, you know, all the PR the promoters in this it area. It takes takes ten shows right. for me to get all the guys together and be able to pay for it and commit. Right. That's true. And um we would do ten on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And then we, we went to Connecticut, we were in New York, BB Kings, we did go places, but they're one offs kinda, you know, and um I, why I couldn't get 30 shows, maybe 40 shows in two months. But I said, let's, let's get trans to people to book us. We'll take right. their leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> they exactly. get hundreds of thousands of dollars. We need 30, you know, it's yeah. like, um, it just didn't work. Or how about, I don't know, perform at Disney around Christmas time or Bush gardens or anything like that, especially in Florida where, you know, it takes the agent it takes. I mean, management for December people, I do. Right. But the agent has to book it. You know, right. The rest right. of the stuff, I have guys crew and all that to, to do all the traveling and all that. But the agent has to book it. That's that's, that's the whole thing. It has to be that's one a guy. Wonderful idea. Nobody's done that before. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, It'll it's hard to get the venues to take a chance. Yeah. What's your track record? How many tickets have you sold here or there? Well, we haven't played on that coast right. before, so right. none. Yeah, you know they just won't take that leap. Mm. But I played with Keith Everson, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they go, they say, "Who?" I say, "Oh God, I Lincoln not. Palmer." Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. That happens to me all the time. You know, I've interviewed you know like Connie Francis, and people go, "Who?" I mean, yeah. who's the biggest thing in the 50s? You know, nobody was bigger than Connie Francis. My Come parents on. had a big, big band. My mom sang in my dad's big band. How so cool I know back you. Yeah. You know, I hate yeah. that. I hate <laughs> when I interview somebody big and nobody, everybody says, who? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, here's one question about Greg Kinn. Um, Greg, Greg, I think he had a radio show in, in the DC area oh, as well. The, the biggest, biggest we've ever had radio. <laughs> he, you know the breakup song did, did you play on the breakup song with him on tour or anything oh I, we i've been with him 18 years wow so i didn't know that i didn't know it was yeah that i wasn't on the recording of that right but the last album of course was done here at sound tech with me and i co-wrote with him and we have another album mm -hmm. that's all done mm -hmm. but his manager doesn't want it to go out so you know why there. want to wait that um, great moment i guess when I had Greg on the show, I asked asked him about the breakup song because you know yeah. he, he, we had broken up for good just an hour before, uh, 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 uh. and I asked yeah. him why why he did that. He says he ran out of lyrics that would rhyme. Is that true? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was the placeholder. That yeah. is so funny. <laughs> and now people, you know, I'll say they say, oh, musician, what do you play? Well, I play Greg Kinn. He goes, Greg <laughs> Kinn. You know, I'll go. Uh, 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 yeah, exactly. Uh, they go, oh, yeah, <laughs> that guy. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, I like Greg. He's he's a cool yeah, guy. Yeah, he's a wonder, wonderful guy. Again, yeah. just one of the best. He's so much fun, and he's he's got so much knowledge. And when he he'll just pours out of him, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. 
All right, Robert, here's your final question. And you, I've asked you this probably three times before, but I'm going to do it again. Maybe, maybe you've changed. I don't know. Yeah. If you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? You've asked me this before. I have. We lost, we lost one of them. Uh, my number one was Jeff Beck. Yeah. Um, I just, and, and honestly, Ian Crichton fulfills those Jack, Jeff Beckyisms uh, for me that I love on guitar. Yep. There's something about it, uh, but Beck was just the best. I think I would do quite well uh, working with Paul McCartney, and that's been a dream of mine. That'll then it'll never happen, but um, it may. It may. I, I've heard so many things of, of his besides the Beatley stuff and everything. It would just be really kind of a cool, I don't know, heavier. Mm -hmm. McCartney, Poppy, kind of whatever it be. I don't know. It's right. a, a, a dream of mine. I don't think beyond those two, I, you, you look at, I've been so lucky. I mean, the, the time I spent with Ambrosia, uh, Greg Kinn, of course, Keith will always be the high point mm -hmm. of um, working with the most incredible, most famous friend the yeah. guy I could ever have. Um Carl, Steve Howe was a, a hero of mine. You Very know? cool. Yeah. Jeff Downs. I just been really, Gary Peel. I mean, Gary mm -hmm. was Sammy's guy. Mm -hmm. I played with Sammy, with David Lauser for two and a half, three years, mm -hmm. right when they were kicking him out of Van Halen. And Sammy's a, a hero of mine, although, you know, he lives up the street. Uh, I do the keyboards for his live show. Yeah. Pre-recorded. So when, when Dreams come on, if he does that on the new new thing or not, for Van Halen, that's me playing keyboards. So mm. I just have such a charmed life, and I've always done it the way I wanted to do it. The parts when they didn't fit, I've said like GTRs. I love working with Steve Howe, but these other guys are it's not working for me. Mm -hmm. I've moved on, and luckily, because I do what I say and say what I do, or whatever <laughs> that saying is, it I've managed the next day, like tomorrow, yeah. something's happening. You know, so you know it's because you have a positive outlook on life. I think that helps. And people, I've I've had interview where I've done an interview goes, well, how do you feel about not really, you know, cracking it, not having that number one record, or being as famous as you should be? I said, you know, I, I never think like that because I like the hunt. Yeah. The challenge for me is, mm -hmm. I've had a top ten song, mm -hmm. great, but mm -hmm. that was back then. I, I'm looking for another one, and if I had. 10 top 10 songs uh, maybe i'd be resting on my laurels I, I, I wouldn't be hungry for it you know right. and i like that that hunger and like with ian and nigel i'd be like man we're gonna crack this we gotta gotta push we gotta do this let's try this let's... and then hopefully it opens up to the success we want and then of course for me success is always a moving target so <laughs> it, it, it'll be what are we gonna do now what can we do tomorrow Right. To, to make a difference, you know, give more than you get and try to get somewhere. Sure. It's a great band. I really, really like the band a lot. I can tell, man. I appreciate that. Really. Yeah. It's a good band. Very tight band. Great musicians. It shows. It shows, man. Um, I want to say special thanks to Roy Aven for arranging yeah. this, mm. this with uh, Royal Avenue Media. Yep. arranging this interview with Robert Berry. Good guy. Gets me a lot of interviews. Uh, you can pre-order Beyond Channel and Now by 6x6. And I think the website 6x6.link.2 backslash Beyond Shadowland. I don't it. know what that is, but um, <laughs> I think that, you can that's what six, I got. Yeah, but I guess they can go to your website or Amazon. It's on the Amazon. Yeah, 6x6 six six band will take you to the website, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you order on Amazon. It's, it's what's a week away from being out, something like that. I, I said, can I get a copy before everybody else does? I said, <laughs> well, okay, where should we mail it? I said, where should you mail it? I get the record contract. I send you all the files, the mixes. I send you pictures. Where should you mail it? They don't want me to have a copy. <laughs> so, That's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. It's like me with my books. You know, everybody's got a copy of my book, but but me. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to go to Walmart for Christ's sake. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I would also say I want everybody to buy your debut album as well, the self-titled debut album, which is incredible. I also like it. 
Um, for more information about Robert Berry and 6x6, go to www.robertberry.com. You're on Facebook, um, 6x6band.com. That's their uh, website. Right. They also Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Robert, it's been a real pleasure, man. Always love to have you on the show. Well, you're great to talk to. I really said a few things I shouldn't have, which you're no. I'm sure going to hang up from this thing. <laughs> oh, I got him. No, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're very tame compared to some of the <laughs> interviews I've had in the past. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> no, but you're, you're easy to talk to, Raymond. We always have a good time. Oh, yeah. I, I appreciate that the way you say the things you say about it isn't just patronizing let's say oh i got a monster i better be nice uh, you mm -hmm. go deep into it and i know you play so it means a lot to me i know? appreciate it i appreciate that thanks man but best to you the family and uh can't wait to see you guys on tour hopefully you'll come to florida one day you know again uh we're looking for a u.s agent for yep. six by six it's yep. not easy to find because the u.s is sort of flavor of the month Europe is more of an artist yeah. thing, you know. That, that's true. So, trying to find the right the right guy, the right woman. Uh, we'd like to get an opening. I think we should uh, open a tour for somebody. Mm -hmm. That way we could really plaster ourselves across the U.S. quickly. But anyway, that's part of uh, that juggling act that I'm trying to, to deal with here. Yeah. How about opening, well, let's see, Saxon, I don't know, is Saxon opening up for Uriah Heap or Uriah Heap opening up for Saxon? I don't know. I think they're going to trade off a little bit. Um, right. it, it's, um, you know, to cross-pollinate the drummer, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's sort of not what we want to look like. We're, we're not a project. We're a real band. Yeah. And we'd like to stand on our own. And here, so six plays and Nigel's up there. Thank you very much. Then he comes back up. Oh, here, here's Nigel's up there again. You know, um, and we need to open for for Yes or Journey. Even I mean, you know, <laughs> to right. whoever, somebody that um, is different from us, but the people can accept our music. And uh, you know, we're a little little even with Journey as poppy and, and everything mm -hmm. they are. We have the AOR piece, we have the heavier rock piece, and we have the progressive piece that kind of blends a lot of different things together. And an opening set, we could probably do pretty well with you. almost anybody, I think. You, you know what, Ben is doing really good. I just covered him here <clears throat> in Florida. And I, I know most of the guys in the band. Fog Hat. Oh, yeah. You think he can play with Fog Hat? Now, like a duo? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have a heavier side. I mean, they're a hard rock band, kind of. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. uh, more, 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 a little AOR hard rock, but we have that piece. Even Titans, as crazy as weird as it is with that chant and all the stuff, that audience I think would like Titans. They would like yeah. China, yeah. right? Um, I think we could do really well, and people go, "Wow, that was an interesting set." That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the band, so you won't want to listen to me. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of prog bands you can open up for. For sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd yeah. be a good mix. Yeah. All right, Robert. Thanks, man. We'll see you until next time. We'll definitely talk when the uh the new album's coming out or very good. The next door. Thanks, Raymond. Appreciate your time and definitely want to talk to you again. Always. Okay, man. Me too. Right. Thank see you, you later. Thank you. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you for watching Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shaw Show.